Lithuania has a strategic position in Europe, and it has a long history of friendship with China. Today, we're very glad to be joined by the visiting national defense minister, Madame Rasa Yuknevichina. That's so, right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking this interview with China Daily. Thank you very much. So we know you just had a talk with the Chinese counterpart, Mr. Liang Guanli, on Tuesday. So could you please elaborate more on what have been discussed between two militaries? Mm. Uh, first time in our history we signed an agreement among our ministers of defense on uh, further, possible further military cooperation. And um, uh, we agreed to exchange uh, direct uh, groups uh, our department to department, military to military cooperation uh, would be developed and uh, we will have a more concrete agenda in future. Uh, we hope that uh, we have uh, a lot uh, to, uh, to rethink and to do together. We are members of United Nations together. Uh, for us, for China and for Lithuania, it's very important peaceful development in our world. Uh, that's why uh, we think that exchange of experts, exchange of experts, for example, from your National Defense uh, uh, Academy, uh, or to have your experts in Lithuania or in Baltic uh, Defense College, which is located in Estonia, in Tartu. We are together combined our efforts, our resources, and we have Baltic Defense College, uh, students, um, other possible activities in peacekeeping operations or uh, preparations for peacekeeping operations, uh, I think uh, will open doors, this agreement will open doors for our uh, future cooperation. It's very important to know each other better. Okay, so you just mentioned that the exchange programs in the future. So what's your evaluation on current ties between two militaries? Like the scale? Are you satisfied with the scale at this stage? Uh, yeah, but uh, now it's uh, only the beginning. I am the second Minister of Defense came to uh, China um, since we became independent, since 1990. And uh, as I mentioned already, it's uh, the first time uh, we signed an agreement. It's very beginning. It's very beginning. It's, we opened doors, opened windows for further cooperation. Okay, so do you have any detailed fields that are concerned about the exchange groups? It's about the strategy learning or staff training or any other fields? Experts. First of all, experts. And to start military to military talks, a uh, group uh, in Lithuania or department in Lithuania and department in China, they will have contacts, they already have contacts, and then they will elaborate on further cooperation. Okay, so geographically speaking, we are remote friends. So do you think there's any possibility we could contribute to the regional security in the future from both militaries? I do think, uh, you know, the world became uh, smaller, com becoming smaller and smaller every mm -hmm. day. Uh, China is very close to Lithuania today because of uh, trade activities, mm -hmm. uh, because of everyone in Lithuania knows uh, Chinese clothes, products, everything, Chinese restaurants. Uh, we didn't have this uh, some 20 years ago, uh, and today we have. So people-to-people -people contacts helps uh, uh, also our defense or military cooperation to be enlarged. And uh, mm, it's uh, despite geographical distance, uh, we are very close now to each other. Yes, we think we are close. Mm. We know that you were the acting foreign minister before. So how do you evaluate the bilateral, in the broader sense, how do you evaluate the bilateral relationship. You just mentioned the people-to-people -people contact and people-to-people -people relationship. So in a broader sense, how do you evaluate these ties? In defense affairs, we also have a lot of foreign affairs mm -hmm. uh, because it's, uh, it's related very much. Our membership in EU, our membership in NATO, 
our strategic partnership with the United States, uh, other countries, it, uh, it's, it's a lot of foreign affairs also. So China as global player, as a country which is uh, part of uh, daily life everywhere, uh, it's, it's becoming more and more important. So uh, we had a visit of our foreign minister last year. Uh, also, we had, we had uh, very close contacts uh, in activities of transport, uh, connections by transport, by railway. We opened a new uh, train, uh, especially our interest is uh, to engage countries like China uh, to be more active because of uh, uh, very good um, our state um, geographical situation. We are in between East and West. Uh, it's very, very important, I think, for countries like China to have activities in Lithuania because of our membership in European Union and because of our uh, open uh, gates to the East also, okay. and very safe and secure business in, in, in my country. So you were talking that your country could be a hot, a hot yes, and yes, of course. between China and EU country members. And China, EU and reg other region countries uh, from, from, this, from this region to EU. Okay, so now let's have a very interesting topic. We know that the female politicians have been actively joined the politics, the contemporary politics, but for a national defence minister, it's very rare to see a female mm. minister. So how do you evaluate this? How do you see your position? Yeah, of course, uh, no secret that uh, a female woman is first time in Lithuanian history as Minister of Defence, but it's not uh, as unus very unusual in uh, Europe. Uh, for example, in Norway, our good friend uh, Norway, they, it's, uh, may, may, may be more tradition to have women in this position than men. Uh, when I came to this position in NATO, mm -hmm. North Atlantic Alliance, uh, we were five women as mm. ministers of defense. Uh, so it's not so unusual. And uh, in Lithuania also it was not a big surprise because before becoming minister of defense, I was in the parliament for more than 10 years engaged in defense and security issues, in National Security and Defense Committee. So leading uh, this issue in my political group, in my party, I was number one for defense, for security. It means when we won election. So it was, uh, I got a, a proposal from my prime minister to take uh, this position. So since getting to the office, what changes did you bring to the office? Not because I am a woman, but because of our different maybe political understanding on defense comparing with previous government, uh, because we do think that uh, we have to uh, have balanced approach towards um, defense. Uh, we are very active in international missions, international uh, like missions like in Afghanistan together with NATO, but also we have to elaborate, we have new strategy on our own territorial defense. So we changed strategy and we did a lot to uh, engage our um, own people to be ready for defense. I mean, uh, we are working hardly on elaborating new structure on reserve issues. We have to uh, educate young people for uh, defense. Not only military, professional military has to be uh, ready for that, but uh, it's state issue, uh, our society issue to be ready for defense. So you mentioned, you suggested the balanced strategy of your country at this stage. So do you think as a woman, as a female, you have more flexibility and softer power to influence this kind of balanced approach? Yeah, balanced approach, uh, it's also not maybe because I am a woman, but because we need to be ready to defend ourselves, uh, not only be active in other parts of the uh, world, but 
for me as a woman, of course, it helps uh, to be in this position because it's a little bit exceptional situation and uh, sometimes maybe it's better to communicate uh, with the with other states, other leaders of the states, or defense ministers, and um, mm, but it's not exceptional uh, in in case of Lithuania because now we have our president woman, we have speaker of the parliament uh, woman, second uh, position in the state, we have minister of finance woman, and minister of defense. In our armed forces, we have close to 11% of women. They are in armed forces. But in civilian part of our ministry, it's, I think, even more women than men. So many people used to that in Lithuania. It's very old tradition. We have women in the parliament since 1920, when other European countries didn't have women at all and uh, didn't have uh, possibility women didn't have possibility to vote at all. We had this tradition. So I think it's long uh, way to the situation. We, uh, we went long way to the situation we have now. This is a very nice tradition and this is my first time to interview a defense minister mm -hmm. not wearing a uniform. <laughs> as, you know, that's a very elegant address. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's just turn back to our point is um, What's your expectation for the bilateral cooperation in the future? I mean, between two militaries as the defense minister, mm. and this is, might be the last question of today's interview. I, I, I do see a very good perspective. Of course, step by step, we are different, no doubts. Uh, even uh, you have a minister of defense, uh, military person, we haven't as in Euro European style, European understanding of, uh, of defense politics, it is necessary uh, to be civilian. Uh, it's uh, because uh, we have to have uh, political and uh, democratic control over the uh, structures like uh, military armed forces. So despite that, I do think uh, if our countries will share the same understanding on peacekeeping in the world. Of course, it, if it will be enough political will to uh, realize such understanding, I do think that step by step, knowing each other better, we will, we will have good perspective on, on our future cooperation. I'm sorry, a follow-up question is that you, several times you have, you've been mentioning peacekeeping cooperation between two sides. Do you have any specific plan about this? For example, yeah. for example, anti-piracy. Hmm. It's a big problem in Africa, uh, around Africa, with piracy. Your people suffering, our people suffering. Uh, you are very active in this uh, European Union Atalanta operation. Uh, we are ready to join the same uh, operation in nearest future. So. Why not? But we will, we will be in the same uh, operation, in the same fighting, the same threat together. So it's a very good example how to, uh, to be together fighting the same threats. Thank you, Minister. Thank, Thank you so much, much for taking this interview Thank with China Daily.